For God's sakes, hit the emergency! Stop! Hurry! Chuck was dead and eaten by the crusher. I ran down the catwalk, hard up in my throat and the metal wire clanged in my boots. Behind me I heard the slam I knew to be Dan mashing the big red button with his fist. The crusher's noises slowed to a stop, but Chuck's screaming didn't. He screamed and he screamed and he screamed and the horrible sound of that screaming echoed out over the plant floor. When I got over to him, he was already halfway in. His face was red and covered in giant beads of sweat. I saw him look up at me, fear in his eyes, and beneath that, there was something even more frightening, pleading. I grabbed his gloved hand with mine. He clutched it so tight it felt like he was going to tear my damn arm off. But he just kept grabbing harder and harder. His scared eyes looked up at me, all white with tiny black dots in the center. And his mouth was moving real fast. Oh God, Merle, it hurts. Oh God. Oh God, Merle. I don't want to die like this. I don't want to die like this. I don't want to die like this, Merle. Oh my God. And he just kept looking up at me with those big pleading eyes of his, all full of fear and crushing my hand and repeating it over and over. And I didn't know what to say or to do. I tried to reassure him despite myself, and the thought of all his insides all ground up not two feet away from me inside the mouth of the crusher. I kept looking down into his eyes and saying, It's okay, Chuck. It's okay. It's okay. Just grab my hand. Just grab my hand. I heard Dan run across the floor behind me, and all the next part was kind of a blur after that. Chuck's terrified eyes staring up at me, me yelling at Dan to get the foreman, then the police, ambulance and fire all showing up at the far end, sirens a blazing, and they all come running, and all the while I'm sitting there staring into Chuck's big white eyes and he's crushing my hand and telling me he doesn't want to die that way. Just hold my hand, Chuck, I kept saying. Just hold on, good buddy. Stay with me. Hold on, man. Don't you die on me now. You hold on, you bastard, you hear? And after a while, I got to thinking that maybe I wasn't saying these things so much for Chuck as I was for myself. I felt a hand on my shoulder and looked over and Dan was standing behind me, giving me a look in my eyes. Merle, he said all quiet. They want to talk to you. I looked down at Chuck and his eyes were still wide in terror. And I started talking all reassuring like to him. Chuck, Dan's going to talk to you now, okay? I'm going to go for a second, okay? Dan's going to be right here. You talk to Dan, okay? And I could see Chuck's eyes looking at me like a scared animal. Like a dog who knew its owner was driving it out to the woods just to abandon it there. This pleading look of please, please, God, don't leave me. But I just kept telling him Dan was going to talk to him. Take Dan's hand, Chuck. Dan is going to talk to you. And finally, Chuck let go and took Dan's hand instead of mine. And when I walked away from the crusher was when I noticed things were strange. The paramedics and the firemen and the police were all just standing back with the foreman, just watching, not doing anything. And that's when I realized it was quiet, real quiet. None of the other machines in the plant was running, and the whole plant was totally empty except for the lot of us, as the foreman had sent all the other men home. One of the paramedics stepped forward and with his eyes looking down at the floor, he said to me all low, I'm sorry, but he's not going to make it. And I asked him what he meant, and he made no bones about it. We all pull Chuck out of there. He's going to bleed to death fast, given that his insides are all ground up already and half his body's missing and his guts would all just, just spill out. Nothing to be done about that. But leave him in there, and he was going to bleed out all the same. 
only slower, mind you. Of course, the third option was the one no one wanted to think about. Get Chuck out of there by restarting the crusher and letting the machine do its dirty work. A goddamn horrible prospect. But at least it had put him out of his misery sooner than later. And he'd know when it'd be, and it'd be fast. Do I have to tell him? I said. No, said the paramedic. Your friend already is. And then I looked over at Dan, clutching Chuck's hand just as I'd been. And I could see even from my distance he was talking down to Chuck, telling him what's what. And I heard Chuck crying. Screaming. No. No, no, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. And I looked up all around at the cops and the fire and the paramedics and it was all awkward, like they didn't know quite just what to do. And then I heard Chuck's voice ringing out over the concrete floor of the plant. Susan! He screamed. Where's Susan? And then him crying. And I knew them firemen and cops and the like got here real fast after they heard Chuck was in the crusher. But the time between when I heard Chuck's cries for his wife and when she showed up on the plant floor, why that seemed like no time at all. I found out later the foreman had called her. All of a sudden, there she was. Chuck's beautiful wife came striding across the plant floor to the belt of the crusher where he was. And I could see her face was red and she'd been crying. But I could see too she had a certain determination in her step. A certain feeling of her knowing why she was there. The paramedic that had been talking to me spoke up, stating the obvious for her. He's uh, over there, he said pointing to the horrible machine with Chuck sticking out of it and Dan knelt down next to him. You, uh, want us all to leave? No, she said, looking down, and I saw her eyes watering. Just give me time to say goodbye. Of course, ma'am. And all those other emergency crew and myself looked on as she slowly strode over to Chuck lying there on the conveyor and she knelt down next to it. And Dan kind of shuffled away and let her there next to Chuck so they could say their goodbyes and came back and joined us. All those EMTs and the foreman and just us two engine monkeys all covered in grease. We couldn't really see, but I got the feeling that Mrs. Chuck, she was so calm and seemed almost happy when she got over there. Her long, blonde hair was swept down on Chuck's body, and I heard her talking all soft and sweetly down to him. I could only imagine what she was saying. And then, from behind her beautiful form came the most amazing sound. Something that so surprised us all, and couldn't have been stranger given the situation we were in. From behind her, I heard the sound of Chuck laughing. I could hear them smiling together. This went on for some time. All of us men just standing there and watching and them making their final peace. And then finally I saw her long blonde hair sweep out again as she gave Chuck one final long passionate kiss on the mouth. And I tell you with all the terrible things that was happening that day That one moment was probably the most goddamn beautiful thing I'd ever seen. And I tell you the truth, all those men standing there with Dan and the foreman and I, men who'd seen families torn apart by violence and destruction and sickness and death in their daily work and not so much banded an eye, I tell you there wasn't a dry one among them. And I looked over and saw Dan and the foreman crying too. And I'm not ashamed to tell you I was. And then Mrs. Chuck, she she caught up and turned and strode past us just as she strode in, her face wet with tears. 
but she was smiling, I could see. Ma'am, I called out, but she didn't break her stride. I've said goodbye to my husband, she said. Good night. And she left the plant and all of us men standing there. And I look over at Chuck lying there and I could see now he wasn't scared no more. He was just lying there all still. And then Dan was saying what I realized I'd known all along, just as all the others had, as we watched the two of them say goodbye and share one last kiss. Dan looked at me, and then I gave him one that stopped him. No, I said, I'll do it. And I walked over to the crusher and stood next to Chuck and tried not to look into his face. I put my hand on the lever and I could feel my sweaty palm against my glove and the cold steel. You, uh, you sure about this? I said, staring straight ahead. Sure as I've been of anything in my whole goddamn life, said Chuck. And then Chuck's voice rang out over the plant floor one last time, loud and powerful as any man that had ever lived. Let her rip! <laughs>